Hi, darling. I am so good. It is really good to see you. How are you feeling? I'm feeling great. You know, it's interesting because today's the first day of the official state shutdown, you know, so it's um, it's really interesting. It's sort of cloudy out and like the, the city is quiet today. And so we'll see, you know, one day at a time, right? Yeah, exactly. One day at a time. And just to give a little uh, reference to our readers and our viewers about how we met, um, I'm going to let you talk about yourself in a minute, but just we met via Instagram yep. and Lou was doing a gratitude challenge a few months ago. Um, she put up a post about feeling grateful, which particularly resonated with me as one of my rescue pups had almost died that week. And as I read Lou's post, there was Wolfie running around the garden chasing squirrels. Mm -hmm. And so I had to comment and then Lou commented back and then before you knew it, we were doing a photo shoot. So here we are. This is our interview for Warrior Women, December 2020, Wildly Kind. Yeah. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to share. Yeah, no, it's such an honor. Thank you. And your photos are beautiful, by the way. Thank you. I can't wait to see them. It was fun. Um, all right. So please, can you tell us a little bit about your background? Wow. Okay. Um, background. Um, well, I'm, you know, as a, my real job is I'm a TV news anchor at KTLA in um, Los Angeles. And, um, but I'm also uh, the founder of Be Kind & Co, which is also a passion of mine, um, which is a lifestyle media company and uh, online magazine and e-commerce and just whatever. I'm not sure what it's going to, going to become, but it's uh, my passion. And I'm a vegan, I'm a dog lover, I'm a daughter, I'm a sister, I'm a friend. That's me. But you actually have, just to back it up a minute, because you really have an illustrious career, which I think is very inspiring to hear about right now, you know, with everything that's going on. So tell us, please, about Teacher to <laughs> this USA, and then yeah. to the several Emmy Award wins for journalism. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, it's interesting. Um, I, I have had a pretty diverse life. Um, I went to college and I'm from South Carolina. I'm a Southern girl. And I went to school at the College of Charleston and then went to graduate school and ended up getting a degree in English with a certification to teach. So I was a high school teacher in my early 20s, which was a lot of fun. And um, just one day I decided to be in the Miss South Carolina USA pageant and prepared for that and won it at, I think I was 24 at the time. And then literally when you win that pageant, you represent the state in the Miss USA pageant. And so I represented South Carolina in February of 1994 and I won it. And you know, you, you always go in to win, right? But I won it and it's like, whoa. And so now I go from high school, 24, 25 year old high school teacher in South Carolina to being moved to Los Angeles because that's where the company used to be based. And so they moved me here and I traveled the world. I competed in Miss Universe. I traveled the United States. I lived out here and it was fantastic. But it literally, that one part of my life was a 360 turn for me. It took, completely changed my life. Cause if you think about it, if I had gotten first runner up, I would have gone back to Charleston, which is fine. That would have been the path. Right. But what would that have path have looked like compared to this? It's so, it's so fascinating. You know, the push of a button, right. Yeah. Uh, the judges or writing down a score or my performance or the universe or so that's sort of interesting. And then I ended up getting into television about two years later. Um, a television station back in Charleston, South Carolina, hired me as an education reporter because I was a former teacher and they had followed me to all the pageants. And so I think they did it as sort of like a, um, it was a, a good advertising thing for them because I didn't have any experience. And I actually did not want to go back. I wanted to be able to stay out here, but I knew if I was going to be in the business, you have to get on camera, right? And so I went back and it was all meant to be, um, and it was beautiful the moment I did go back and a couple of reasons that happened, you know, how fate has everything. And then I ended up going to Texas for seven years and then made it back here. I've been here 15 years, but I have been at KTLA the entire time. And 
Um, you know, you mentioned the Emmys and they never really, it's so funny because Emmys never really, or awards never really meant anything to me until they call your name. And then you're like, the tears start flowing, you know, cause it's justification of your hard work and your dedication. And so I've been really lucky. Two of them were for, um, animal, um, issues. I did one, um, for, uh, behind the scenes of puppy mills, uh, just educating people about, I think it was about eight years ago when people didn't really know much about puppy mills and also circus, um, abuse of animals and the bullhorn. And that was before animals had been banned too. So it was like leading up to all of that. So, um, those were really important to me. Um, and then another one for a story I did on, um, some homeless photographs, this photographer who was doing videos of homeless people to help them move forward and get jobs so they could have headshots. Wow. Yeah. That's breathtaking work. And I love that you won your Emmys for service oriented mm -hmm. reporting journalism. Yeah. And some of them are anchoring and one was for the Christmas, the Hollywood Christmas parade with Mark Steinis, which was a lot of fun. Actually two of those, I think for that. So that was more of hosting. And then the other one was for our 1 PM at KTLA. So, you know, I, I feel honored, but you know, I've been doing it for a really long time. If I haven't figured it out by now, then <laughs> there's, there's <laughs> now then let's get to immediately this word kindness. So it's very much a signature word for you, mm. whether people are watching you on KTLA or they're looking at your Instagram or they're following Be Kind and Co on Instagram. Kindness is your word. Mm -hmm. What or who inspired you into kindness being so important to you? Well, first of all, I think um, in a weird way, it, looking back, the more I kind of, and I wrote about it recently about my grandmother, who my mom said she was like really into kindness and purple. And now all of a sudden I am, have a website called Be Kind and Co with purple. It's like so weird how someone can influence you and you don't even realize it as a child, you know? I think a lot of it does come from my grandmother um, and even my mom, when she, when my grandmother died, she found a handwritten note where my mom had jot, my grandmother had jotted down a quote about kindness in her um, pocketbook or her purse. And so, you know, that influence not, and she died when I was in sixth grade. So, you know, I never had a conversation with her about kindness, but um I think that's inherent in us, right? And then we're taught, my parents were both very kind or my my dad passed this year, as you know, and he was very kind, my mom is very kind and they always supported my kindness around um, saving animals. You know, I was always saving animals as a kid and, they're, and instead of saying, no, you're not bringing that squirrel in or no, you're not bringing that bird or that mouse or whatever you found in the woods, they were always like, okay, sure. If you want to try to save it, here's a shoe box and like, let's figure it out. Or, you know, so there was always an element of kindness in my family overall. Um, and I just inherently feel in my gut, to be honest, Anna, that, um, I just, I mean, a lot of people don't like confrontation. I do not like confrontation and I would much rather, um, be on the kind side and the gentle side and the um, understanding side rather than where there's conflict. And so I've always, and which may be a detriment in a way, you know, a lot of people say that they believe that kindness is, you know, they look at it as like fluffy or as a weakness, but, you know, I've always looked at it as a strength. I've always looked at it as even in business, and in my career, you know, my philosophy has always been like when I was felt like I was stuck in Texas and wanted to be in California or when I was in South Carolina and wanted to be in Texas or whatever. I always said, work hard and be kind and good things will come, you know, and, and never burn bridges. And so, you know, I don't know who, what, where influenced me inherently to want to help. Like I'm a helper and I've tried to suppress that and I've tried to push that down and I've tried to say, you don't need to, you know, be helping everybody. You don't need to like, you know, and people are like, you should be mad at them or whatever. I'm like, you know what? I'll give them three chances <laughs> after the third chance. Then I'm like, okay, enough. Right. But I typically give people and things like a moment, you know? And so I think that's really important. 
Um, in terms of be kind and co, you know, uh, something happened to me about four years ago where I was trying to be kind and I was trying to help someone and it blew up in my face and it was a really negative situation for me. And that's where I really had to look at myself and say, um, why is this urge? All, why do you always have this urge to help? Because in this situation, you're trying to help and be kind. And now you just got, you know, pretty much effed. And now, and a lot more could have happened. And so I wanted to give up on kindness. I wanted to, you know, beat myself up and say like, why do you always have to be, you know, picking things up to help people? Um, but I didn't give up on it. Instead, this is what evolved was be kind and co. And so I took it in, instead of being angry, instead of being bitter and feeling like a victim, um, I flipped that and decided to, um, put kindness in the forefront of our minds even more so than I would have in the past. I think, you know, it's interesting when you say about people see kindness as fluffy or a weakness, you know, you and I are very similar birds. I'm just drawn to help. I'm drawn to be of service. I always joke that in this lifetime, obviously there were plans for me to be of service, whether dog rescue, saving the planet, whatever it is I'm doing, I'm always helping others. And, you know, it is such a strength to be able to choose to take the high road, particularly in, in the society we're in today. Mm -hmm. It really is. And, and I'm like you, sometimes I just like, literally, oh, for F's sake, really? Mm -hmm. Why can't I, you know, for me, it's like, why can't I be more superficial? Why can't I not care? You know, because there are, there are those that, you know, if you lay down like a doormat, they'll tread over you. And I do find it, say, definitely a struggle at times in life to keep that high road but not take not take it personally when others don't understand or appreciate the value of what you're offering or giving yep i totally agree and 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 on that note you know i've read before where you can't be mad at people who are not meeting you where you need you want them to meet you they're not they're not ready yet yeah that's kind of you <laughs> <laughs> there she goes being kind okay um <laughs> So all you can do, I mean, yeah, it's all you can do. I mean, I mean, well, no, it's not all you can do. You can act out in other ways, but <laughs> you know, it feels a little bit better sometimes, you know, especially when you look back on things, right? right? When you look back years later when you thought it was this big thing and really it's, you know, nothing. It's like a blip, right? I don't think you can ever regret taking the high road though. No matter exactly how big the pill you might personally have to swallow. I don't think you'll ever look back and regret being decent ever. Ever. You know, ever. it doesn't matter what everyone else is doing. If you've always, you know, held your head high, taken the high road, yeah, a good person, you're never going to regret that. Nope. So now what I want to know as a girl is career. <laughs> because of this astonishing career you've had, um, you know, women in the workforce, interesting because they're either, from my personal experience, they're either very kind or there are some women that can be very threatened mm -hmm. by others that come in and are strong, are you know, uh, well-practiced and well-versed in what they do, have a good um, work ethic. It's, it's interesting. Talk to me about women and kindness in the workplace. Um. Yeah. So the first time I ever experienced that was when I uh, got my first job in TV news. I was 27. And, you know, again, very gullible, very Southern, very, I love everybody. Everybody loves me, men, women, everybody. Right. So I was always like, you know, <laughs> probably, I was probably annoying, <laughs> but I was, I was just, I was born happy, you know? So I, you know, came into that newsroom as a former Miss USA fresh off the boat, right, of meaning um, winning the pageant, come in and, you know, not everybody was nice, including women. And at one point, a couple of guys. And I was like, well, first of all, why is she not speaking to me in the bathroom? You know, when you go in the bathroom and there's the, there are the stalls and the two sinks or whatever, and 
I'd come in and I'd be like, hey, or she would be washing her hands or she was another reporter. Nothing. Like completely stonewalled me. And I was like, hey, I thought maybe she didn't hear me, you know? And um, so eventually it really upset me for like six months. I was like, what? I said, what am I doing wrong, right? What have I done to annoy her? Or what have I done to annoy you know, this other guy who was now looking back was just a bitter guy, you know? Um, but at 27, I didn't see that. And so, you know, I had to come to the realization and a lot of other things were said, you know, here and there, but, um, I just learned that not everyone's going to love you right as a, a woman and not everyone's going to want you to succeed and people are insecure and they're jealous. And all you can do is again, work hard and be a kind person and move forward and let them deal with their stuff. Um, currently now with women and kindness, um, I am very pro woman. Um, I think, um, I'm obsessed with just females and what make us tick and like why we do what we do and our insecurities and what we wear and what profession we choose and who we love. And, and I just find it fascinating. Um, and you know, one of the main things I really try to do at work is stay out of the gossip circles. Um, because I think that's where things can get, um, a little, it's like high school, you know, you get into the gossip circle and things can get nasty and you're now you're not looking at, you're trying to find the negatives of, of someone as opposed to the positives, right? You're also um, thinking yourself to fit in with the status quo because, you know, we gossip and there's, there's a collective in that there's group. And if you choose to stay away from the water cooler there's a small sense of isolation in that self-isolation I've never liked it though no neither have I yeah I've never there is there is isolation in it and that's one thing that I think is so important to teach younger girls and guys but that you don't have to play in that world I mean I'm I'm oftentimes at work people are like oh did you hear and I'm like of course I didn't hear you know if I'm of course I'm the last one to hear because I'm not over in the corner doing the whispering and the talking and that's okay. Like I do feel left out sometimes in that way, but I'd rather be left out than to um, put negativity out into the world. Like I, if you can't say something nice, don't say anything. Right. That whole saying. Um, you know, it's so similar. It's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Hey, listen, it's not always easy. Right. Sometimes you just want to be like, Wah! like, you know, and I go, or I come home and I'm just like, you know, dump on somebody about it, you know? And, but in the end, I think sometimes if we really can focus, this is what I do. And this is like, it's not a trick of the trade, but it's how I deal with it is that when things are negative or when someone's annoying the, the craziness out of me or they're being a bad person or whatever it is, I come home and I say, A, what is, why am I being annoyed by that? Why are they pushing my buttons? Right. A. So I have to look at myself and then B I say, what could be going on in their life? for them to be acting like that? Are they unhappy in their relationship? Are they dealing with a sick parent? Are, do they hate their job? Are they insecure? Do, blah, 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 blah. I mean, cause everyone's got a fight that, you know, they're fighting a fight you don't know about. Right. And so, and I try to picture them as children, like a, as a little child, right? Because we were all kind and innocent when we were children. And then I don't know what the hell happens, but something happens, right? And we get, we get, um, twisted. <laughs> yeah, we get twisted. That's a great word. Um, I try to do that. It doesn't always work, but sometimes it does. And, um, I try to find something where I can not feel sorry for them, but like understand what maybe that they're going through and not take it so personally. That's great about the taking it personally and not going into a place of being a victim is yes. very powerful because I think it is easy, especially right now when we're all a bit down in the dumps mm. and, um, you know, COVID fatigued, not to, well, maybe we're all a little more sensitive. With yes, 100%. Reason, right. So that's great if you can come home and do that and have that quiet moment of just, okay, you know, and letting it go. 
um, I would probably be coming home and reaching for the Hagen dazs Oh, yes. <laughs> Nothing <laughs> wrong with now. that. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. No, I'm, yeah. I, but you know what? That's, you know, we're filling, that's us filling, that's us stress eating. Emotion, I call it emotional eating. You know, mine's, mine's cereal and jelly and toast and, mm. you know, and sitting in front of the TV and just like eating as much cereal as I can and like a big, roll with butter and you know my vegan butter and jelly but you know that's just emotional eating and that's us as, as children we probably didn't learn how to deal with our emotions right so we're going to suppress it or try to suppress it with some people do it with alcohol some people do it with food some people do it with shopping sex whatever it is people suppress that but that's one thing i've been trying in terms of self-care is instead of doing that say you don't need to do that. That's obviously a pattern, right? Why don't we try to try something else, like getting quiet with ourselves for a second and see what what we need to face, right? Why are we feeling like we need to get on the couch and or hit the a hog and dogs, right? I mean, obviously, right now we know the collective is coronavirus is you know coming down on us, right? And economic and in terms of our economy and you know jobs and that's all and then that ultimately affects our relationships and then it's just never ending, right? And so how can we breathe through that? I think is you know and I don't do it enough. Um, I have friends who are great meditators and who get quiet every day and um, I intend to, just not really good at it, but I'm trying. Meditation is great. Meditation is the thing yeah. that got me through um, the immediate aftermath of my dad passing away. Mm. And yeah. that was just because I was really so squirrely with grief. Mm. Grief is the worst beast ever. I think it's yeah. the one emotion I have learned that I really cannot control because yeah. it'll just come up and go, Whoa! and yeah. then all of a sudden you're out of nowhere. Yeah, and you're you're breaking all of a sudden. So that was when I really turned to. Um, I did Abraham Hicks. I love Abraham Hicks, and just yeah. taking those minutes and literally every time, even if it was every hour on the hour, but I would feel that <gasps> come up. I literally would get my headphones, <laughs> go out for a walk into the sunshine, go sit under a tree, mm -hmm. get into nature, and just and it really really helped. I have to admit though, I've been a little bit lapped lacks on my meditation through COVID. Yeah. yeah there's been more of the Hagen dolls. <laughs> okay. It's all right. I had a whole epiphany last night. I felt, oh my gosh, like you said, Anna, you're emotionally eating. What is going on with you? And I think yeah. when we decipher the action that we're taking that maybe isn't so kind to ourselves, yeah. it is easier then to choose something kinder. Yeah. And I think self-kindness is a really big conversation. And I think also because uh, in you not eating the cereal or the big crunchy yummy roll with jelly mm -hmm. and taking moments of quiet or working through your emotions, there is an inevitable moment going through that where you're going to feel like, <clears throat> yeah. you know, because you've got to confront what's upsetting you in order yeah. to move beyond, right? There's got to be um, a surrender. So let's talk about self-kindness. How are you kind to you? Um, I am, well, my girlfriends call it me time, Lou time. Um, I love doing skin stuff. So I'm always, I love doing facials um, at home, you know, like just the silly little skincare and serum. I get really excited about doing things like that. And um, I take, I've now learned to, slow down and take a bath and just get quiet and turn on like inspirational, beautiful, like, you know, either Indian drumming or just some sort of music that where I can Calgon take me away. I don't stay in there long. I'm, I, it's like eight to 12 minutes, but you know, but, <laughs> but you know, I get in, I'm like, mm, this is good. This is good. And then all of a sudden I'm like, okay, I got to get out of here. But it's a moment and inevitably I always feel better after a bath, right? Just taking that, that and lighting a candle. Um, you know, I think I'm kind by, you know, we talking about eating cereal and stuff like that, but I am very aware of what I put in my body. Um, I look at 
um, our bodies as, you know, it's the only body we will ever, it's, we're feeding our own body, our, and, and whatever we feed is what projection we're giving out in terms of energy, in terms of light. Um, and if we, you know, stuff it with a bunch of gross things and obsession, then that's what will come out, I think. And so I try to eat lo- alive foods that are alive, not um, dead, you know, cause I'm vegan. Um, so I don't eat meat. I don't eat any dairy products. Um, and so I'm really aware of that. And I think that's being kind. Um, you know, I, I do drink, but I'm not like, I, I'm not obsessive drinker, but, um, you know, so I try to watch that as well. I exercise. I think all those are me being kind to myself and I love to sleep. So, you know, lots of sleep. And what about emotionally? How are you emotionally kind to yourself? Emotionally kind, I, it is a daily practice because, you know, the voice in the head, you know, I even wrote about it uh, last week uh, for Be Kind and Co. It's like, what is your voice saying to you? You know, you're not good enough. Um, how dare you think you can start a company? Um, how, you know, you never can keep, you know, there's all kinds of stuff that I say to myself that we all say to ourselves, right? Um and especially as aging women, you know, like we're not in our twenties or our thirties or even our forties anymore. Right. So, or at yourself. Least not. take yourself, <laughs> Me. Like she's but, like, but you know, at some point, you know, we can, you know, I've got girlfriends who are in their thirties and they're like, I can't believe I'm already 35, you know, and, they, but they're already doing it right. They're already doing it. And they've got another 15 years before they even get to me, you know, and I want to say to them, stop. Right. But I need to say to myself, stop. Right. Because you can go there as a woman. I mean, men can do it, too. But women have a tendency, you know, especially you get to an age where then you're like, well, is anyone ever going to love me or is anyone ever going to, you know, look at me in a certain way that they want to be with me forever? Of We're course, not. They can be with a 38 year old. What? We're very hard on ourselves. Oh, 100 um, percent. So I try. I really do try to flip it. So say what, well, one thing I do is when like, sometimes, you know, when you wake up in the morning or whatever, whenever time it is, and you're just like wrong side of the bed. Right. And so everything seems to be like, wah, wah, wah. um, if I'm in the shower, there's a lot of times where I'm doing a lot of my thinking, if I'm in the shower and I have a glass shower, right. So it steams up and you can do things on the shower. One thing I do do every morning is I make a, I take, I make a huge heart in, out of the water, you know, and out of the steam but I also think of what I'm thinking in the shower. If it's negative, I make my, and just in that space, in that tube, I flip it, you know, whatever it is, I try to flip it to a positive and say, no, let's look at everything we're grateful for. Or like, instead of saying that to yourself, Lou, why don't you say, but look what else you've accomplished or like what, blah, 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 or whatever it is. But even the heart in the shower, just, and sometimes I do a double heart. And it just, it's silly stuff like that, but it just is like, today's going to be a good day and here's the heart, you know? I love that. That's so positive. Mm -hmm. And I think any of those little things, like for me, if I wake up and have a morning, I reach for, you know, one, two, and three rescue dogs. And it's amazing because just in that, and just to really reinforce about us all having our little little ways that we know we can self-adjust Mm-hmm. So that maybe we can swing our perception and have a better day. Um, you know, and just the feeling of those little furry beings that unconditionally love me are such sweethearts, yep. are safe, happy, and healthy. Just that feeling just it might, makes my heart go, whoop. Yep. You no, know? just automatically. It's like it's the fastest five minutes to happiness I know. Yeah. You know, yeah, and in finding it's those, un- it's unconditional. That's why. Yeah, but my then my gratitude for their well being is unconditional. Oh yeah, you know that's the big, yeah. the real big payoff for me. Um, I'm I'm more of a giver than a taker, so I could sit in. Oh, they love me all day long, but it just wouldn't fly. I'd still be cranky. Yeah, it's that feeling of what I've given, of the difference I've made, that just makes me so fulfilled. Yep that that's really my ultimate, Mm. you know, what, what. So quickly, quickly, what are some of the ways that you promote kindness 
within your profession? How do you help others? Well, um, the good news is I'm able to tell stories that are positive, right? Because every day I'm having to report negative stories, right? So I'm always having to report about coronavirus deaths or hit and runs or earthquakes or shootings, or it's just never ending, especially in the LA market. You know, it's like, and I do 20 hours of live news a week. So that's 20 hours of me like, blah, blah, blah. So the good news in my business is that I am able to tell positive stories. I am able to, if I see something that I want to be able to put together a piece and tell, or um, sometimes, you know, I'm able to meet someone on the street and her name is, you know, Cindy from Laverne. I am sometimes able to mention that on camera, you know, and of course that's going to make them super happy or wish a stranger happy birthday or a friend's mom happy birthday um that's really important to me and then on social media through you know that's that's also work you know um meaning that's also through my work um i'm able to say positive things and and if you notice if you follow me um if people are out there and they they do follow me i i never i may say hey today was a wham wham but this is how i got over it i'm never negative and i try to really give um share stories where you have a takeaway right so you so i'm just not talking about me the whole time where i can actually say this is how, yes, I might be talking about me, but this is how I deal with it. And hopefully this can help you when it, when that shows up for you again, you know? Yeah. That's the one thing about your social media um, and everybody watching this at Lou Parker mm -hmm. and at Be Kind and Co. Mm -hmm. Lots of really positive things that you share. And, and I always love that you set, set things up in a way that's very honest and very real. If you're not having the best day, but then you'll give us <laughs> the how to yeah. moving beyond that so that we can feel peace joy liberation in our in our days well and that's one of the like you know if i really break down be kind and co and like why what i'm doing is that you know i'm not i understand that kindness can seem fluffy and it can seem like i'm not saying be kind to everybody all day and to yourself every day like it's just not possible right um but if we can keep kindness in the forefront of our mind. So when we do have to make a decision, maybe we can make it a little bit more in a kind space, right? Even driving to work. Like I love being a kind driver. I like letting people in front. I like letting them sit at the light. If they're looking at their phone, I don't honk immediately, right? I give them that three to five seconds. Um, you know, sometimes it becomes 10 seconds and then they get the horn, but <laughs> you know, <laughs> but a soft horn, but not a, you know, because that's only going to stress me out and stress them out. And I've been the one who's been in front. Isn't it cool? Like I've been, you know, looking at my phone or doing something and someone, I realized, Oh my God, the light screen. And the person has not honked at me. That's beautiful. Like, I'm like, Oh, what a cool person. Right. And I'm not stressed out anymore. And I mean, I'm not stressed out. If they had been like, Wah! and honked at me, then I'm going to be stressed. They're going to be stressed. I might pull out in front of someone and get hit. You just, Oh, it drives me crazy. So it's, you know, it's just the whole kind space of keeping kindness in the forefront of everything that we do. Um, and not always, but just a gentle reminder. That I love that. And I just think also for us um, as women to have words that, you know, we sort of associate with ourselves, words that we choose, we choose to live by. And again, I think kindness is incredibly powerful. I think it's incredibly strong because it's a lot easier to go the other way nowadays. Yep. You no, know, even prior to COVID, it was a lot easier to go the other way and be shallow, be superficial. Be oh, I think, I think more so before COVID. I feel like COVID has brought us more together and has highlighted kindness. I really, I really do. I mean, we're irritated and our fuses are you know, at the edge and we're scared, we're afraid, we're worried about people and our friends and, you know, in our lives and our livelihood, whatever, all that is cumulative. But I think ultimately kindness has been a put a light on kindness during coronavirus, because look at everything that people have done for one another, how they've shown up for each other. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, you're right. <laughs> I mean, you could look at the negatives too. I mean, uh, uh, let's look at politics. You know, I'm just English, so I just try and keep everything in perspective. You know, everything's very right. simple. That's true. <laughs> but I mean, even like with politics, it's the same. You know, like it's we. It it was very. It got very divisive, and it still is divisive. But I think you know, ultimately people want kindness. People want gentleness. People want decisions to be made and people want, um, I don't know. I just, I, I really do feel like if we can, if we, if you look hard enough for kindness, it's out there. I love and uh, what the beautiful thing is about kindness is that there are a lot of acts of kindness that are happening that no one knows about because there are some amazing people that do that and never tell that they do those things. And that's, those are the moments when it's just between two people and no one ever will probably ever know that that ever happened. And you'll never see that person again, probably ever in your life, but they will go to their grave knowing that you were kind to them or vice versa. And that, that does it for me. Yeah, that's beautiful. And so in your personal life, we obviously know you are vegan. So yep. you're kind to animals. You rescued moose. So you're kind to dogs. Mm -hmm. rescued and monkey, my old dog. And monkey, your old dog. Mm -hmm. How else do you practice kindness in your personal life? Um. I, well, I love to help snails across the sidewalk. <laughs> I know that sounds so weird, but it is such it. a thing. It is such a thing. Like when I see the snail, like halfway across the sidewalk and I just always pick them up and send them. I never put them in the opposite direction. I just take them in the direction that they're headed and I just help them along so they don't get stepped on. Cause it kills me when I step on a snail, like it just like, Oh, it makes me so mad, but, um, just little things like that. Um, you know, I, I like to say hi to strangers. I like to surprise people on the street. You can't really smile at people anymore because you have a stupid mask on, but <laughs> at least we're wearing our mask, but you know, you can still smile at someone with your eyes and, or, you know, like a good old wave, right? Um, when someone's not expecting it, right? or when you just say hi to someone, even with your mask on and they're not expecting, you don't know what they're going through that day, right? And for you to say good morning or hi, or, cause I've always noticed that we have like, oh, oh, hi. You know, and it just, you're acknowledging them, right? You're acknowledging their presence. And another thing I do at work that I really try to do, I'm not in my cubicle as much anymore cause I'm on the set all the time, but or if I'm in the hallway, if someone comes up to me to ask me a question or wants to chat or whatever it is, I hate when I go to see someone in an office or go to chat with someone and they're like, yeah, so how are you? Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. So yeah, what's been going on? Uh-huh. Okay. And they keep going back to their phone or to the computer. It drives me banana cake. So when someone has come to, in my presence, into and I know that they need my attention or something from me. I put the phone down, I don't look at the computer, and I look at them and I listen to them. Now, after a certain amount of time, I may have to say, Hey, I need to get back to my work, but I give them that attention, and I think that is kind because you are giving them your attention without thinking this is more important yeah. than this person, this human that's in front of me. I'm gonna like double task here, right? It's just, I feel like it's so rude. Um, and so that's a small thing that I try to do. I don't do it every time. Um, I don't stop every time and have a conversation with people as much anymore, just cause I'm like, we're all busy. But when that happens, I really try to be present. I love that. Yeah, I know it's, and that to me is also, that's old fashioned kindness and respect. You know, when someone comes to you, give them your attention. Mm -hmm. If you don't have the time, then say, oh, could we do this a little bit later? Yes. On deadline or, you know, whatever, whatever you have going on. But I do think that that paying attention by giving your attention is really yes. big, particularly in today's like really fast moving society. Listening. Listening. Yep. I talk a lot and I, I do want to learn to listen more. I think you're a good listener. Oh, thank you. So finally, 
advice, advice as we come to the end of this grueling year. Advice Ooh. for girls and guys. I don't want to alienate the boys in this conversation, yeah. but on how to get through the rest of this year and into next year with kindness. I was hearing on, you know, KTLA this morning that uh, it was Newsom was talking and that, you know, pays it to get ready for a brutal January into February. Really? Uh, January, February? Yep. Yep. So that's what he was saying, basically. We're, yeah. you know, January is going to be... Um, worse? Worse. So we're basically got to batten down the hatches. Yeah. Uh, get through Christmas, which is, you know, isn't oh. cancelled, but it's not going to be anywhere near the same. Um, there are lots of people that haven't seen their loved one. I won't have seen my mum for over a year, which kills me. I and mean, that's yeah. probably my biggest COVID heartbreak. Because yeah. mum's in England, I'm here, I only have one parent now, and she, I can't get to her, you know. So what are your tips oh. for all of us to get through the rest of this year, through a slightly intense beginning of 21? Yeah. Practicing kindness to ourselves and to others. I mean, it's it's hard for me to 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 give that advice because you know that it what you just said gives me anxiety myself to even think about like what you know it's like. Um, but one thing I do talk to my just that popped up is like you know worry does worry doesn't help. Right. So if you're, if you, if, when you said that, my first thought was I went to January and February and I started worrying about certain things. Right. But you can't, worrying's not going to change it. Right. So being present and realizing like, okay, so what, what are you worried about? How can you change that? Well, you can't change that. Or what can you do to fix that? Well, maybe there are little things. So look at it that way, as opposed to like stressing yourself out about the unknown. Cause the only thing we really have is right now. Right. Um, I'm going to have a tough time because, as you know, I lost my dad in April. It's going to be my first Christmas without my dad. And I'm not the only one. There's tons of people who have lost family, you know. So I think just having friends and listening to each other and we can't hug each other, but and support each other, you know, and um, don't be so angry. Let go of the anger. You're a darling. Thank you so much for sharing with us today. You really, you. you leave me exiting this conversation extremely moved. And that's the biggest gift you could give me. So thank you. Thank you. I would hug you. I know. One of our, <laughs> one of our virtual hugs. Mm. All right. We're grateful. Okay. I'll see you soon. See you soon, my love. Have a great okay. day. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye.